Hey guys, so I mentioned I wanted to do a review of the Samsung Galaxy A53 versus the Moto G Stylus 5G 2022. Um, and I've gotten to use these phones uh, for over a week now and I wanna give you some of my thoughts. And it's interesting because it's not completely what I expected because what I expected is that I was going to like the Samsung Galaxy A53 way better than the Moto G Stylus uh, 5G 2022. And I apologize for how dirty both of these look. I literally struggle to keep these clean. It, it's impossible. I keep wiping them and then my finger just, I don't know. <laughs> just expect that. They're going to look kind of, you know, fingerprinty and smudgy. Um, yeah, this was surprising for me. Um, and I'm going to go over some of the reasons why I keep leaning towards the Moto G Stylus uh, 5G 2022, and I know these names are kind of ridiculous and hard to keep straight with Motorola because they also have a Moto G Stylus 2022 non-5G version, so very long names and very confusing, but getting into both of the phones, um, there's a lot to like about both, and there's a lot of cons with both, um, and coming in at the price points that they're coming in at, I'm a little bummed out about where these companies cut corners. Some more than others, as I'm going to talk about, but I'm I'm disappointed with uh, the corners that were cut on the A53 performance-wise, and I'm disappointed in the Moto G Stylus 5G 2022 as far as the corners they cut video recording-wise and speaker-wise. So I'm, I'm disappointed for different reasons, but it still is a bummer on both. But I'm going to tell you why I keep going back to the Moto G Stylus 5G 2022 and why this is the one I personally would rather have in my pocket. Now, looking at the build quality of both, um, as you can see, the Moto G Stylus 5G 2022 is the bigger phone. It is also the heavier phone. Um, so if you like a larger screen and you rather a phone be heavier, feel a bit more premium, I suppose, weight-wise, um, then the Moto G Stylus 2022 5G is certainly your phone. The A53 is very light and definitely easier to use in one hand. They both have this very lovely plastic fingerprinty construction. I would say the A53 definitely picks up a little bit less fingerprints because it has a less glossy back uh, plastic cover, but they both kind of do, as you can see, pick up fingerprints. Um, the Moto G Stylus has a metal band around the outside. Woof. Woo. That, that was dusty. There you go. I had it in a case. Sorry. Uh, it has a metal band around the outside along the sides here and then plastic on the back. And the A53 is just all plastic. Um, they, uh. They don't feel super premium. Um, it, personally, I just throw a case on these, so it's whatever. But if you are not the type of person that throws a case on them, then just know both of them feel very plasticky. Moto is heavier. A53 is lighter. Moto is bigger overall. A53 is smaller. So those are the big differences in design there. Um, I mean, neither is going to win any awards for uh, for aesthetics. It just, it's going to come down to personal preference. Um, personally, I prefer the lighter feel of the A53, but the uh, Moto is not super heavy or anything. So it's not like it's cumbersome or, or uncomfortable to hold. Uh, but it is a big phone. Just keep that in mind. I mean, you know, you can see the size difference here. It's, it's a good size phone. Now, when we're looking at, uh, at the bottom, uh, you'll see that there is a speaker... Uh, type C port on the A53, a speaker type C port, and a headphone jack on the Moto. So you're getting no headphone jack on the A53. They took that away this year, uh, which is a bummer in my opinion. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I guess most people uh, just aren't using the headphone jack, I guess Samsung thought, and they just remove it. I, I think they should have left it, but that's just my opinion. And then obviously on the Moto, you have that stylus which gives it the name on the uh on the side the power button and the volume rocker on the a53 and then the power button and volume rocker on the moto g stylus 
except on the Moto G Stylus, you have a fingerprint scanner on the side, which is very nice to see. And the fingerprint scanner uh, is very good. Um, I'd say it works majority of the time. I rarely have any issues. Not maybe the fastest in the world when the screen is off, but it always works, which I really like. Uh, where on the A53, it works most of the time. And I will say this, the A53 is a lot better than the A52. It does work more often than the last phone did, but it's still not my favorite. It just, sometimes it doesn't catch my finger, but I'll say this, it is much improved. And I do give Samsung props for putting a better, faster, more accurate fingerprint reader in the screen. So I, I'd say these are about on par with each other here. Let me try to do this at the same time so that you guys can kind of see. Let's make sure I do this right. Hold up. I messed up. I messed up. We're going to try again. All right, let's try. Oh, my God, it keeps turning off. Hold on. I keep accidentally opening um, the Moto. So, I mean, it's pretty close. Let's try again here. I don't know. It's up to you guys. I think the uh, Moto is a little faster and a little bit more reliable because it's an actual fingerprint reader um, built into the power button versus in-screen. In-screen on budget phones always tends to be a little bit worse and a little bit slower, but it's not bad. It's not bad by any means, and it's not a deal breaker. Like the A52 was a deal breaker for me. The fingerprint scanner was so bad on it. So this one's much better, and I'm happy that they both are pretty comparable. I'd say they're both pretty good. No issues there with the fingerprint scanners. Now we're looking at the uh, screens. Very, very different. On the uh, on the motor, you're getting a 6.8 inch IPS LCD, um, which, you know, take it or leave it. Some people absolutely hate having an LCD screen and would much rather have an AMOLED. But I'd say it's not a bad looking IPS screen. I don't think Moto put a, uh, a crappy panel on here. It's not the best viewing angle wise, but it's not terrible. It gets just about bright enough outside. I wish it got a little brighter. And it is a 1080p screen at 6.8 inches and it has 120 hertz, which is nice to see. So I am happy about that. The, um, the A53 on the other hand is an AMOLED screen, which is what everyone uh, tends to love, or I'd say more people enjoy. And uh, this screen is coming in at six and a half inches, so it is smaller and also is 120 hertz. So they're both 120 hertz. They're both 1080p panels, except the A53 is AMOLED and the Moto G Stylus is IPS LCD. So that's going to be a preference thing. Um, if people care or not, um, I'd say the 120 hertz looks good on both, but uh, I think it is a little bit more fluid on the Moto. And we'll talk about that some more as we discuss, um, you can just see the viewing angles are definitely a little bit better on the A53 than on the uh, on the Moto. But they're both colorful, they both look nice. Um, if we go into, wow, doing this behind the camera is not easy. If we go into the settings, we can look at what I have this set to. I have the refresh rate on and the screen set to vivid. And on the Moto, I have the color set to saturated and I have the display locked at 120, but you can also put it to auto. So that is up to you guys on if you wanna save battery or not, lowering the refresh rate, turning it off, those are your options with the two phones. Now, when we're looking at the uh, processors and RAM, we are going to see a difference here. With, with both of them, they are, they're good as far as daily usage. I don't think too many people are going to have any issues with the processors that are being used here. It's not... It's not the end of the world that these are using kind of lower end processors because I think that they're decent. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about them. So with the Samsung, we're looking at the um, Exynos 1280 here and six gigabytes of RAM 
and 128 gigabytes of storage. It's fine, and it's supposed to be better than the last year's Snapdragon 750, but I'm not noticing it whatsoever. It feels about the same. And when I say about the same, that's not a good thing because I don't think the Snapdragon 750 and the 852 was very good. It feels just as stuttery as last year's phone. There are times where I'm, I'm opening things and it just feels um, not as snappy and fluid as it should be. Like, I feel like there's always a stutter and a lag. And it's just, it's kind of weird. Like, everything just feels... I know it's not coming across right now on video, but if you use the phone, you'll know what I'm talking about. Especially when you first turn this phone on, if you have it turned off. Oh my God, like literally, I'm not joking, for like 10 minutes, it is just super laggy and stuttery. And, you know, when you first turn a phone on, of course, it's booting up and everything, and it might take a couple seconds for it to, you know, fully load everything. But this phone takes an incredibly long time to become smooth. It just doesn't feel like 120 hertz phones, 120 hertz phone a lot of the time which is a real bummer. And I think that Samsung did this on purpose. I just think that they wanted to make this phone significantly worse than the flagship phone so that they could push people to the flagships, which I get. And most manufacturers do that. It's not like what I'm talking about here is, is something special or some, or some big secret. But I think that they, they just did too much here because if you were to use a Google Pixel phone around the same price point as this, it's leagues better. It's not even close. Like a Pixel 4a is so much faster and more fluid than this. I, I don't know what else to say. It's just, I think Samsung really cut the wrong corners here as far as the fluidity of the phone. It's 120 hertz. It, it's the, Ex the Exynos processor in this isn't terrible. It just doesn't feel as fast as I think it should feel uh, when opening and closing apps. When going through the phone, I just noticed way too many weird little stutters and lags and just jitteriness, you know, like I don't like even scrolling feels. It just I don't know if you guys can even tell you see right there, it just skips like it just. It doesn't keep up as well as I would like it to. It doesn't look as smooth as I expect it to with 120 hertz. Um, now when we look at the Moto G stylus also has 120 Hertz, but this one has the, uh, Snapdragon, uh, 695 in it and it has eight gigs of Ram, uh, which with the, uh, Ram boost feature can be, um, boosted up to 10 gigabytes of Ram. So eight to 10 gigs of Ram and the 120 Hertz screen, the Snapdragon 695, it just feels so buttery smooth. I don't know. This phone to me feels more like a pixel. Like it's just super, super smooth. And I will give um, uh, Motorola props there because I don't know. I just feel like everything is smoother on this phone. You could say it's because of the Snapdragon processor. You could say it's Motorola uh, making everything nice and fluid with their, you know, close to stock Android versus the One UI. Um, but I don't know, guys. I don't know if you can just tell from me scrolling right now. You know, one is significantly smoother than the other. And in my opinion, it's the Moto. It just is so much smoother with just about everything. And I, it's just the phone I am happier with more often than not. Um, it's a shame because I do like the Samsung and I was expecting it to be better but, you know, I just feel like it's so stuttery. And I don't know why Samsung crippled it so much. Like, I understand you're trying to push us to the higher end phones, but it's too much. It's just too much, in my opinion. Um, they both run Android 12. Um, obviously, the Samsung is going to get longer support than the Moto, unfortunately. You can probably expect the Moto to get, like, one upgrade, Um I, Motorola is not terribly good with their support, especially with their budget phones, mid-range phones. So I wouldn't expect too much support with this one. Definitely going to get better support long-term with the Samsung. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, you know, again, this is going to be up to you guys, but I just notice it's hard to tell in the video because the A53 looks fine, but I'm telling you in day-to-day -day use, 
the the moto is just much smoother and opens up in, in a smoother fashion in my opinion um and the processors when you look at antutu they're about the same very very similar performance so these are very very even as far as the processors are concerned and let's see i'll try to open these so the a53 one there um again very very close very similar performance let's check out um let's oh here let's actually okay now that the app is open let's try to open it again i'm just curious god the moto is a big phone it is so much harder to use yeah so once it's open it's about exactly the same but did you see there there I, i'm telling you there's like a stutter with the with the Samsung, when I'm opening and closing apps, I just notice it so often. It's kind of frustrating. Um, let me see if I can. Um, or let's try. Let's try the cameras on both. And I know this isn't like an apples apples comparison because they have different cameras, but again, it, it's very very similar. I just notice a smoothness on the Motorola I don't notice on the Samsung. So, you know, take that for what it is. It is an AMOLED screen, and, and it, it's it's super nice. It's a beautiful screen. Don't get me wrong. I, I do think the A53 has a nicer screen overall with better viewing angles, but I just wish, I wish it was smoother. I wish it was as smooth as the uh, Motorola is. Now, let's also take a look at uh, the cameras on the back. And... Uh, this is another area where I'm torn. There's certain aspects of the A53 I like. There's certain aspects of the Moto that I like. So first, first and foremost, um, you know which camera would I say is better? I'm gonna go with the A53 is better overall, and I'm gonna talk about why. I think it's the more competent shooter overall, but I've had far more fun shooting with the Moto. I think it's a more diverse camera um, and more fun to shoot with all the different modes that this has. And I've just enjoyed it more. Um, so when we're looking at the uh, different setup, we have the 50 megapixel uh, camera on the Moto G Stylus with optical image stabilization. Um, you have an 8 megapixel ultra wide that has a macro mode built in. So it does have autofocus, which is nice to see, and a depth sensor, which is mildly useless. I shouldn't say useless, but I don't know. It's less exciting. And then on the Samsung, you have the, pretty much the same setup the A52 had with the 64 megapixel main sensor with optical image stabilization, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 5 megapixel macro, and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. Remember, though, that the macro does not have autofocus, which is extremely annoying, which means that the Moto is the far better phone for macro shots because it has autofocus. This one is fixed focus, and it's just, it kind of makes the macro useless, in my opinion. It just doesn't take very good shots as far as macro cameras are concerned. Um, but if we're looking at just day-to-day -day images on both, um, I'm going to say, as far as landscape shots are concerned... I would go with the A53. I think it takes better uh, landscape shots. Nice and colorful, very saturated, very Samsung looking. Um, it, it has good detail levels. If we're talking uh, close-up shots, I'm going to go Moto all day. I think it just takes some incredibly good detailed close-up photos. Not just, you know, necessarily super close macros, but also just, you know, if you're taking a 50 megapixel shot here, I think there's more detail in the 50 megapixel mode on the Moto than there is in the 64 megapixel mode on the A53. So if we, um, you know, go to both cameras and we go to more and we go to more, um, you know, you can see some of the different camera options that you have. It is nice seeing the pro video mode on the, uh, on the A53. That's rare to see on some of the budget mid-range phones. So that's pretty cool. May not have all the settings and all the options that the uh, you know higher-end Samsung phones have, but that's still pretty cool to see that they're giving you some of these options. And I'm tr so desperately trying to click on this. So you can kind of, you know, you can change some of the settings. 
Um, you do get a pro uh, camera mode on the Moto, but not a pro video mode. So keep that in mind. Um, there is a bit of a difference there. Uh, you know, is everyone going to care about that? No, but it's nice to see that Samsung has added those extra features. Now, as far as the uh, the video, this is this is where the Moto really falls apart. So the Motorola can only do 1080p 30 or 1080p 60 video. The A53, on the other hand, uh, can shoot up to 4K on the front and rear camera. So uh, I just don't understand Motorola doing this. The Motorola is $500 and the A53 is $450. And you're getting 4K on the front and the back on the A53, where you're only getting 1080p on the front and the back on the Motorola. That is a major bummer. I think Motorola really messed up there. Kind of kills the camera experience when you're only allowing 1080p at such a high price. 500 bucks needs to have 4K. There's no two ways about it. That's just, it is what it is. To, to only have 1080p on this phone is a crime. They really messed up there. Um, it's okay at 60 frames per second. I've said this before, but at 30 frames per second, it is a stuttery mess. So I would not use the 1080p 30 on this phone. Use 1080p 60. That looks much smoother and much better. Um, the A53 has pretty darn good video recording. The 4K looks nice on both the front and the back. Uh, I, you know, definitely the wind's obviously going to go to the, to the, uh, Samsung. It, it just looks better. Uh, it looks cleaner and it is a higher resolution and it is nice that they gave you that option as they should at this price point. Now let's take a look at some of the photo samples and, uh, you guys can uh, judge for yourselves, uh, which phone you think takes better pictures. Video test with the Moto G Stylus 5G 2022. This is a video test with the A53. All right, guys, so as you can see, they both take very good photos, and they're very good at different things. Close-up photos, the win is going to go to the Motorola. Landscape photos, the win's going to go to the A53. Um, uh, night shot photos, the win is going to go to the A53. It just takes better night photos and has a better night mode. It's not to say the Motorola is terrible. It's just I say that the, the Samsung is better. Uh, video recording is going to go to the A53. 
the ultra res 50 megapixel mode versus the 64 megapixel mode on the uh, Samsung, the winner is going to go to the Moto. It has a better ultra res mode with more detail. Macro mode is going to go to the Motorola because it has autofocus on the ultra wide and just takes way better macro photos. It's not even close with a fixed focus on the Samsung. Um, zooming photos going to go to the uh, Samsung. It takes better zoom pictures. Uh, Samsung's been leading with zoom on all of their phones. They, they just, they're killing it. So there you go. That's the cameras guys. Um, you know, I'll let you guys decide. I know it's very subjective on what people care about, but that's up to you. In my opinion, I had more fun with the Moto, but yeah, I have to admit the Samsung is probably more consistent and has more features. So to each their own. Um, now taking a look at the, uh, the speakers, this is the other big con for the Motorola. Um, and a big win for uh, for the Samsung. The Samsung has dual speakers, one on the front, one on the bottom. The Motorola has only a bottom firing speaker. So if we go in here... All right, that's the Motorola. Let's take a look at. Okay, video recording. Those are the two things that absolutely kill me. Samsung. All right, so as you can tell, the Samsung sounds fuller and better, but the Moto is actually louder. So, I mean, personally, I would take the Samsung because it has the dual speakers and just sounds better to me. Um, the Moto, they're not terrible speakers. I mean, it's not a terrible speaker, sorry, singular, but it, it's, it's not as good as the Samsung. I'm sorry, it just isn't. So I think Motorola dropped the ball with no 4K video recording and no uh no front firing speaker that's just the truth of the matter so if it was my money it's tough there's problems with each um i think it's going to come down to price i think the samsung at some stores is down to 350 bucks uh, it's hard to beat that price for all the features it gives you where the samsung is 499 right now sure it might come down eventually but for right now the a53 is honestly a better bargain but for me personally, I've enjoyed using the Samsung more, and that's because it has a stylus. It has, in my opinion, a better processor. It has a smoother refresh rate that just, it's, it's not a faster refresh rate, but it looks smoother is what I'm trying to say. It just, the whole phone feels like a pixel. It's just very buttery, smooth, and just snappy. Like, I just like, how I, when I use this, I don't feel like I'm using a budget phone. I can sign documents on my job. I can make wallpapers. I made this wallpaper with the Moto G Stylus. Like, it's just a more enjoyable overall phone to use, in my opinion. Whereas the, the A53, I just think it's too stuttery and too slow. And I didn't have as much fun using the cameras because the macro mode is useless. All, basically, the only two cameras you're going to use are the main and the ultra wide because the portrait mode's fine on both. But I'd say go with uh, go with just the main and ultra wide because the macro is kind of useless. This one, the macro is awesome. It's fantastic. You can take amazing close up photos. So if you're really into like photography of nature, flowers, you know, close up shots. I mean, this thing's the uh, the Motorola is killer for that. But um, if you're looking at battery life, uh, I'd say I'd go with the Motorola. Slightly better battery life, but not by much. The Samsung's also great. Maybe eight plus hours on the Motorola, as I said in the review. Maybe seven plus hours in the A53. Pretty close. I'd say the Motorola edges it out in battery just a little bit. 
um, you know, as I showed in the uh, um, the G Stylus review, you know, you know, getting getting pretty good screen on time there. Um, the uh, the Samsung is not far behind though. The Samsung is definitely not far behind. It, it they both have five thousand milliamp hour batteries. Um, they both have fast charging. But the nice thing is that this, the uh, Motorola comes with a charger in the box, whereas the Samsung doesn't. So depends how much you care about these things. The, va the value proposition is very different for both of these. You know, the Moto, you're getting a stylus. You know, the Moto, you're getting this amazing macro functionality with autofocus and a, and a really solid, detailed 50 megapixel camera. You're getting a good Snapdragon processor that feels very smooth. You know, 8 to 10 gigabytes of RAM uh, you know, really excellent battery life, optical image stabilization on the camera, 120 hertz display, a big screen. You know, you're getting the charger in the box. You're getting a headphone jack and a stylus. Like, it's a very unique phone at the price point where with the A53, you're getting 4K video recording on the front and the back. You're getting optical image stabilization on the camera also. You're getting an AMOLED 120 hertz screen, which is arguably better. Um, you know, you're getting a nice light phone with dual speakers, you know, so it, it's hard for me to tell you which one is, is, you know, objectively better. It's kind of going to be up to you guys and your preferences, but between the two, for me, the phone I ended up wanting to use more over the last week was the Moto. I had both these phones in my pocket, but the Moto was the one I kept pulling out of my pocket. It's it's a tough call, but not having the 4K video recording and no front-firing speaker is really a bummer. It makes it hard to use this phone full-time, where the A53 would be easier to use full-time. So again, I think for more people, the A53 is going to be the phone to get. It's also cheaper. But I don't know, guys. I had a lot of fun using the Moto, and it just it feels smoother to me. So there's pros and cons to both. It's a tough call. I'm going to leave it up to you guys. If you guys have any questions about these phones, let me know below. Um, as you can see, I'm very torn. I'm very torn between these two phones. It's really hard to decide. The pros and cons are just so different on these. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think the price is going to speak louder than anything else. And I think people are going to like the price of the A53 better and the longer support and the 4K video recording and dual speakers. I don't think the stylus is going to be enough on the Moto. It's, it's, you know, it's not like an S Pen. It doesn't have all these crazy features, but it's nice to have. I like having it, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to overthrow the A53. So that's it, guys. I'm going to leave it there. If you have any questions, leave them below. Any comments, please share them with me. And uh, as always, please, guys, subscribe to the channel. Uh, throw a like up there. And let me know if there's any other comparisons or any other phones you'd like to see in reviews. All right, guys, I'll see you later.